Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're answering another question from one of our members who wanted to know how to create a wavy text effect in Cinema 4D. You can get your C4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts member at cgshortcuts.com or over on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So this is the reference render that we're going for, which was originally created by Cabeza Patata Studio or Potato Head Studio in English. I'll leave a link to this down below as well if you'd like to check out more of their work, but let's see if we can create something similar. So let's start with a text object and you can type whatever you like, but let's just keep it nice and simple and go with something like C4D. And this effect works best with more condensed fonts, so not wide and skinny like this. So I think we'll go with an old favorite of mine, Tungsten Bold. And I think that should do nicely. So let's extrude these letters out this way by increasing the depth to 500. And if we hit N then B to take a look at the lines, we're also going to need a few subdivisions in here so we can deform this mesh. So let's crank the subdivision up to maybe 50. So that's the text all sorted out. For the next part, we'll need to make this editable by grabbing it and hitting C on the keyboard, which if we pop this open, splits those letters out as separate extruded objects. So let's pull these out and get rid of the extra nulls. And instead, I wanna put each one of these letters into their own nulls. So we could grab each one of these one at a time and hit Shift G to group them. And so we don't get confused, we should also go through and rename each one to match the letter as well. But if you've got loads of letters, that could take a while, in which case you could undo that and use a script instead. And I just so happen to have one loaded up here in my user scripts. If we tear this out and grab our three letters, to pop them into nulls of the same name, we just need to click here to run the script and we get exactly what we want in a fraction of the time. So I'll also make this script downloadable as well, otherwise just rename the nulls manually like so. So let's take our first letter here, the C, and we'll see if we can deform this in a wave-like fashion, which I think should be possible with a formula. So let's grab the null and Shift C to bring up the commander. We'll type formula, and I think this is the one we want. So we'll hold Shift when we click on that, so it's applied as a child of our null which starts deforming our letter straight away. And the ordering doesn't really matter. This can also go after the letter as well, if you like, just as long as it's inside the null. So if we zoom out a tad and play this, we do already have a wavy animation, but it looks like we might need to make a few tweaks. Firstly, our letter's going a bit wonky here, so we'll need to straighten that out. And I also want the wave traveling in the other direction as well. So let's start with that. I think if we just move our formula box back behind the object, that should take care of the direction, like so. And as for the wonkiness of our C, it doesn't seem to be so bad now, but this is also being caused by the placement of the formula. And you can see if we move that over here, it starts to deform more, and the same the further we go this way. So to prevent any warping, we just need to move this as close to the center of the letter as we can. And I'll just switch to the front view, and we can line this up with the C. And we'll just drag the center of the formula into the center of the letter, like so. And that should keep our letter nice and flat without any distortion. The fong angle does look a bit funny, but we'll come back to that. But let's first see if we can tweak the look of our wave deformation. If we take a look at the formula object, this is the actual formula that's deriving the effect. And roughly broken down, it's describing the type of wave, which is a sine wave that's oscillating over T for time. And then the two values here dictate the frequency and height of the wave. So if I increase this first value from two to maybe five, for example, we can increase the wave frequency like so, which looks like this. But increasing the frequency also makes the letter oscillate faster as well. So I think to match our example a bit more closely, a value of one should be about right for this which looks like this, a nice slow rolling wave. Okay, so that's cool. Let's try the other value. This one is the height of our wave. So if we increase this, our letter is going to move further up and down, which if we play, will also make it move faster as well. And if we bring this up to one, we can make that even more extreme. 
but I think in our case, the default value of 0.2 should bring us pretty close to the example. So that's the formula all set up, but the only issue now is that it's not looping. But because our wave travels up and down over time, after one second, it goes from top to bottom, and after another second, it goes from bottom to top. So the looping point is actually going to depend on your scene frame rate. If I hit Control D to bring up the project settings, you can see my scene is 24 frames per second, which means the two second point is where it's going to loop, which will be frame 48. And now if we play this back, it should loop seamlessly. So we need to apply the effect to the other letters as well. So let's pop the other nulls open and holding control, we'll just drag out copies of the formula into those. And we've got them all deforming now. But if we take a closer look at the four and the D, we're getting that same warping effect again because the duplicate formula boxes are still aligned to the C. So we just need to line them up with the other letters. So we'll grab the formula affecting four and switch back to the front view. And I'll just center that to the four. And the next one will move to the center of the D. And if we go back to the perspective view, that should fix those. So that's great if you want all the letters moving together, but our reference render has a bit of an offset between each letter. So let's see how we can do that. If I grab the formula affecting the four, we need to tweak the formula itself and offset the wave slightly. So if we go to the pi part of the equation, which actually controls the angle of the wave, if we type plus 0.5, we can offset the starting angle of the wave slightly, which looks like it's done the trick. So if we play this, we've now offset the second letter. So we just need to do the same to the third letter. And we'll add a plus in here. And we don't want 0.5 this time because that will give us the same offset that the four has. So we need to add another 0.5 on top of the offset from the previous letter which means this needs to be a one instead. And now all of those are offset evenly. So if we play this, we now have our completed animation. So all that remains to do is to fix the issue we're having with the Fong angles here. And I think we can do that by grabbing the extrude objects, which represent our text. And under the caps tab, let's give this a slight bevel of two centimeters. And because those caps are n-gons, that should now prevent any twisting of the mesh and weird fong angles. So that is looking good. Before you render though, you might also like to round out any of those other sharp edges as well, like this one here, which we can do by adding a bevel deformer to the top of our hierarchy here, which does a pretty good job there by default. And you can see exactly what that's doing by switching this on and off like so. And that is now the completed effect. And what's nice about this setup as well is that at any time we can come back in here and adjust the formula on one of these and still get that looping effect. And the same goes with the other values as well. So we can increase this to increase the height of the wave. And that's a little bit crazy, but it does still loop. So that's basically the effect. You could also try increasing the length of the extrusion to get something like this, or put a gradient along the length of the extrusion, or instead of text, you can also use other shapes as well like this. So that's it for this one. I'll leave a link to where you can grab the project files down below. And if you'd like us to answer your questions and help you out with Cinema 4D, consider becoming a member over at cgshortcuts.com. So have fun with this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.